Channel 43, a special sports presentation, Cleveland Indians Baseball. Tonight, the Indians face the New York Yankees. Brought to you by Bush Beer. Remember, don't just reach for a beer. Head for the mountains. From Yankee Stadium in New York City, good evening, everybody. This is Joe Tate with Bruce Drennan, and again tonight, it's a beautiful night for baseball as the Cleveland Indians take on the New York Yankees. And Rick Waits has a tough act to follow tonight, Bruce. Burt Blylevin got real tough after the Indians got him back in the game with the three-run homer by Charbonneau. A little icing on the cake by Rick Manning. You know what was great about last night? Not only the importance of winning the first game of the series against New York, not only the importance of winning the first game of the six-game road trip, but it stopped a two-game losing streak. Again, as we've talked about this year, Joe, with this starting five, uh, as it is the way they've performed, it's difficult to believe that the Indians could go into a five or ten game losing streak because all five of these fellows can't play the role of the stopper. Rick Waits had great success against the Yankees last year. He was 3-0. and He's hoping to baffle them again. He'll be facing just about an all right-handed lineup. I'll be going against Dave Rigetti, just recently recalled from Columbus. And you may find it hard to believe in the Yankee lineup tonight. We'll give it to you right after this timeout. It's a lonely kind of job, riding fences. And after nine straight days, nobody knows that better than you. But it's a job that's got to be done. So you get it done right. And then you head for the mountains. Push. Head for the beer that always goes down smooth as a mountain stream. Bush. Brewed just one way, the natural way, for a taste of... Eastwick, good fastball. straight back it'll be out of play outside foul ball 2-2 two -two pitch no ball three oh here's the payoff struck him out Eastwick comes back with a good fastball out a pinch hitter Bernie Carbo. There you see him. World Series. Left field, Foster is there. Makes the play. Two outs. Carbo, one time, the number one draft choice of the Cincinnati Reds. You heard it before, but that's the irony of this game. He was drafted before Johnny Bench. Here comes more. Hardy also hit the ball Nine solidly to left right. field. Right, right. They're playing him to left field too, Dick. Foster is way over near the line. A lot of room in left center. Right. Important guy. He's a tying run. Two outs. Inside. One one count on Bernie Carbo. Ball two. Good cut, good fastball, two and two's the count. Eastwick. Out of play. 
play. Two two pitch. Just did get a piece of it to stay alive. You ball, you're really happy you did your job. Deep center field, way back, way back. We're tied up. study of a manager, Daryl Johnson, and what a study of fans, and what a study of a bench. There he is, Bernie Reds. It's a memorable game. It's one full of thrills. When we left you, it was tied at six, thanks to a dramatic home run by Bernie Carbo. In the top of the ninth, the Reds went down quietly in one, two, three fashion before Roger Moret. Red Sox coming up in the bottom of the ninth with a chance to send it to a seventh game. Oh, boy. Pitcher tells the story and the sound too. Big red machine has power failure, says the sign. It'll be Doyle, Yastrzemski, and Fisk in the bottom of the ninth. Red Lynn. It's the meat of the lineup for Raleigh Eastwick. And, of course, Joe uh, Sparky Anderson, as he has throughout the series, using a lot of pitchers, getting the hook out early. You get into an extra inning battle, and you've used just about everyone. He has McEnany who hasn't appeared, but he doesn't have many more. 3 nothing on a Fred Lynn home run. The Reds came back to tie it. In the fifth, tied it at three. Then in the sixth inning, the Reds went ahead by a score of 5-3. When George Foster's double brought home two runs, they increased that lead to 6-3 on a home run by Cesar Geronimo. But the Red Sox came back in their half of the eighth. Bernie Carbo, in a pinch-hitting roll, came up and smacked a three-run homer to straightaway center. That tied the game and sent it on into the ninth. In the ninth inning, Roger Moret set the Reds down in 1-2-3 fashion, but in the bottom half of the night. Denny Doyle walked. Carl Yastrzemski singled him over to third. First and third, nobody out. Will McEnany brought on, as you can see. Walked Carlton Fisk intentionally. Bases loaded. None out. Tie ball game. Let's go back to the action. Griffey and Geronimo are shallow. The left fielder, Foster, moves over to the line. He's not quite as shallow as the other two outfielders. The infielder's in as well. It's all right here, Joe. Here it is. Fly ball, left field. Foster's got a shot. They're tagging up at third. Here comes the throw. It is in time. Doyle is out. Foster to bench. A double play. Here is the throw. Foster made the catch in foul territory. He needed a perfect throw to keep the Reds from losing this game. And it was. And bench make the swipe tag. No question about it. Denny Doyle out at home. Watch the tag by Bench. It's the same kind of tag Fisk made in Cincinnati, like a first baseman. Makes the grab and one hand and swipe tag gets him before he gets down. Denny Doyle is out. A double play. Sparky Anderson is out there once again. Close games. You've had the heroes come through, the guys you expected, and you had guys come through that well, just unsung, but good ball players. And here we go. 11th inning. He hits tonight. Fouls it back. Rose. Baron down. And the way this one's going, maybe with only 30 minutes rest. Did it hit him? It hit him. It hit him. And Fisk is going to argue. And here comes Daryl Johnson. Fisk is arguing, but Satch Davidson called it right now. Daryl Johnson wants to know. 
Well, the two big disputes we've had centered around home plate area. Well, Satch Davidson called it right away, and he was right on top of the play, and Daryl Johnson's arguing. Whatever he is saying to Johnson, Johnson seems to be buying. Carlton Fisk is not buying it. All right, we're going to take another look at this. Let's see if it hits a uniform shirt or something. Uh, yeah, it must have, must have been the shirt. If it hit the shirt, it, it hit one of those strings that was dangling. I couldn't see it, I'll tell you the truth. We didn't see any change of direction of that ball at all as it went past him. In any event, uh, Rose is on. He's on, and here is Griffey. Oh, almost a buck as Yastrzemski broke in to uh, protect against the bunt, and luckily Drago completed his throw to first base, or it would have been called a buck. Yastrzemski at first base looking for the bunt. Outside. High, ball two. You guys swing that bat, boy. That's no man's land. Bunted in front of the plate. Fisk is going to go to second. The throw is in time. Fine throw by Carlson Fisk. Burleson in time to get Pete Rose. So there's one away. Here is Joe Morgan. Five for 22. He single and scored in the seventh inning. Griffey, good speed, is on at first base. Drago will be checking him. And there he is. Another throw. 6-6, six, six, 11th inning. Outside. Strike is called on the outside corner. A good fastball by Drago. You heard that pop up here. Pitcher saw it as he came out of the Cincinnati bullpen. That's Griffey. Our split screen. We get to watch him. And there's a good ball. That Well hit, right field, deep. Evans is going back, back near the wall, and oh, what a catch he made. What a catch by Dwight Evans, and it's a double play. Griffey didn't know what happened as Evans made a spectacular catch, and take a look at this. Dwight Evans went way back. He had no room to go anymore. Watch it. He knew where he was, one-handed catch, crashes against the wall, now his throw is off the mark by about 20 feet to the right of first base. Burleson covered the bag, the double play. Big play of the game, and now we go to the bottom of the 11th inning, still tied at six all. We've seen it all. What a great catch by Evans. And Blowing out, we've had three homers tonight, all the right field or right or center field. Carbos was to dead center, the other two to right. There's a ball. seventh game in this 1975 World Series. Carlton Fisk becomes the first player in the series to hit one over the wall into the net. Red Sox win it seven to six in 12 innings. And Carlton Fisk had a lot of little boy in him right there, Joe. 
He took one step, knew it was going to be close. He knew it was gone, and it was dancing in the streets all the way around. Johnny Pesky greets him at first base, and he is dancing as he gets his second base. It That's came very close to hitting that foul pole. We'll see how close. There it is. Pick it up as it comes, and there it is. It did hit it, and Foster did come up with the ball. So there will be a seventh game here tomorrow night. What and a World Series, Joe Garagiola, have we seen here between these two clubs. It's fitting that we have a seventh game, you know? Uh, it had to go to the seventh game, Dick, because they battled and battled. And now tomorrow night, it'll be Gullet, Bill Lee, this crowd, refusing to leave, amazing. So their ball club battled back. They've been up and down, clutch plays, clutch catches. And they are just dancing in the streets here as Carlton Fisk brings a seventh game. A lot of body English for Carlton Fisk. Uh, watch him. <laughs> How many steps does he take? One. He waits to see it. Get over. <laughs> get over. <laughs> he knew it. There it is. I tell you, one of the more dramatic home runs in World Series history. And there is Tom Yawkey to the left, Haywood Sullivan. And there are the fans, and the picture says it all. Well, you won't see many more exciting World Series than the 1975 Classic. What a memorable ball game. It was as good as baseball can be, and that was very good indeed. How good can golf be? We're going to try... Two two pitch. That's a base hit. Manning into left center to pick it off, and Mercer has a base hit with a one out. Mike Ferraro, the first base coach for the Yankees, with Joe Altapelli over a third. Dave Winfield, center fielder, hitting 328, three homers and 23 runs batted in. Winfield last night went one for three plus a walk. Waits faced Winfield in spring training when he was with the Padres. He was pitching him inside then, but the word so far this year is keep it low and away from him. Now that was low and all the way back to the screen. Wild Mercer to second base on the wild pitch. I don't think that's what Waits had in mind with the low and keep it away from him. Well, he fell behind in the count to Mercer, too. Here it is again. Boy, that bounced well in front of the plate. Rick Waits throws two different curve balls. The slower of the two is one which he throws for strikes. The faster breaking ball is a waste pitch, or when he'll try to strike out a better. Throws a fastball, about 85 miles per hour on the average, and, of course, a very effective screwball. So Mercer at second with one out, and Winfield at bat with a 1-0 count. Reggie Jackson is next. Ball two. The remaining bleacher seats for the All-Star game will be on sale from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m at gate A tomorrow. And again, Monday if necessary. Now that one nailed Winfield on the ricochet and the count is two and one. And at the same time, you can also purchase tickets for the Indians' upcoming home games and there are four dandies on the schedule next weekend, all things permitting. Friday night, Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon, and Monday night with these same Yankees. Mercer at second, 
one out and a two one count on Winfield. You had a chance to chat with a couple of guys that went to the meetings today. Yeah, before tonight's game, I uh, chatted with both Dan Spiller and Bert Blylevin, who just for the fun of it, out of curiosity, went to the meeting. We'll tell you about it in a minute. Foul tip, two two the count. Blylevin is not optimistic about it at all. He says the players don't have to make a counter pro proposal. They feel the owners should know where they stand. And that is Pat. And they do not intend on moving back the deadline date. So Bly Levin, at any rate, is not optimistic at all. Waits with a 2-2 pitch to Winfield. And then decides better and steps back. Another foul tip, and it's still two balls, two strikes. That meeting was conducted at Marvin Miller's office in Manhattan, not far from the hotel where the Indians stay in New York. They have now agreed to go to a neutral site for further meetings. Tomorrow they'll talk about the shape of the table, all those other good things that they talk about in negotiations in this modern day and age. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Got Winfield. Foul tip into the mitt of Diaz. Two outs with Mercer still at second base. Rick Waits really fooled Winfield with this pitch. He was way late on it. Was not looking for the fastball at all, but more or less the screwball or the breaking ball low and away. Here's Reggie. Jackson. 202 batting average. Five homers and 21 runs batted in. In last night's contest, he was one for four. Drove in a run. Strike one. Reggie has three homers and 12 RBIs in his last 11 games. Has driven in 14 in the last 13. And is it safely in six of his last eight games. But the batting average is still down there. Strike two. You don't suppose that Reggie has it in his contract that when the batting average is below a certain point, they don't put it up on the board because they still have Winfield's numbers up there. <laughs> there they go. Slap up those numbers. That was a sidearm curveball, that last pitch by Waits. Hammered right at Kuiper, and the line drive retires the side. No runs and a hit with a man left, and at the end of one inning of play, the Indians nothing and the Yankees nothing. Let's check the scoreboard and look at the winning lineup of features in Coleco's head-to-head -head electronic baseball. Sure, Coleco has base stealing and pitch selection, but for real two-player action, Coleco's head-to-head -head baseball also has computed batting averages for each player, hitting for average or for extra power, multiple pitching variations, including a pitch out, extra inning scoring, a message center, and more. Get head-to-head -head electronic baseball by Coleco, now that you know the score. When it's summer, there's only one thing better than a six-pack of ice-cold Budweiser, and that's two six-packs of Bud. Pick a pair. Pick a pair. Pick a pair. Take two by Bud. Look for this display and pick a pair of six-packs, 12-packs, or even cases. It's the smart way to buy the king of beers. For all you do. This Bud's for you. Just when you thought Seiko had done it all, Seiko creates new wonders. Dual display alarm chronographs with day and date. Water resistant alarm chronographs with single button control for each function. Solar alarm chronographs with batteries recharged by the sun. And Seiko's first alarm countdown timer for women. Will Seiko wonders never cease? See them when you see this sign. Toby Harrow will lead things off for the Indians in the top of the second inning. He'll be followed by Bo Diaz and then Joe Charbonneau. Dave Rigetti, the young left-hander, the pitcher tonight for New York. This is his first appearance of the 81 season. Toby Harrow is hitting at 235 with one homer and seven runs batted in. 
Toby's hit safely in three of his last four ball games, going five for 16 in that span. And in last night's game, he was one for four and scored a couple of runs. Ball one. Well, if you missed the perfect game of Len Barker on the 15th, and you also missed tonight prior to this telecast, I've got some good news for you. Toby takes ball two. Wednesday night, May the 27th at midnight, Channel 43 will televise a repeat of the entire complete perfect game tossed by Lenny Barker on the 15th of May, and that is in answer to a very large number of requests, I am told. Yes, uh, I understand that station has been flooded with phone calls and mail and three and one the count on Toby Hera. We had intended on putting that hour special show together for you but because of all of the requests the management has decided to air the entire ball game again. Hera just walked and uh, moves back into a first place tie with Hargrove in number of walks. It's the second one given up by Reggetti. Bo Diaz, the Cleveland catcher, hitting at 338 with two homers and 18 runs batted in. Last night, Diaz, two for three with three RBIs plus a run scored, and he hammers one into the upper deck foul, strike one. Diaz has hit safely in his last three ball games, four for eight in that span with a home run and seven RBIs and two game-winning RBIs. He is now tied for fourth of the American League with five game-winning RBIs. Not a serious attempt to get Toby at first. Indians are 10 and 4 against left handed pitchers this year. This one is a fair ball. Raghetti onto the first baseman Worth. On the second base goes Toby Hera. One out, runner at second. Well, that's all right. It has the effect of a sacrifice. It's a runner in scoring position for the Indians with Big Joe coming up. Now, Charbonneau, the right fielder. Now has a batting average of 239 with three homers and 13 RBI. Charbonneau last night, two for three, a double, a home run, and three runs batted in. Charbonneau has hit safely in four of his last six games, five for 11 in that span with a double, triple, home run, and five runs batted home. Well, he's a good low ball hitter, too. Both his single and the uh, opposite field homer were low pitches. Foul tip, nailed Barry Foot the catcher. Strike one. Bruce, they just flashed up on the board. The Dodgers beat Cincinnati this afternoon. Now, I was out soaking up culture, but I know that you were glued to the tube. What happened to Valenzuela? Yeah, I watched, uh, we'll look at this last pitch. I watched the game with a couple of our players and uh, who had never seen uh, Valenzuela pitch before either. His screwball is absolutely nasty. Tremendous. And he was off today. He struggled today. But you can still see for a 20-year-old the great poise he has, the great control. And you can understand after watching him how he has accomplished what he has so far in this 81 season. He's really an amazing pitcher. And the count on Charbonneau is now even at one ball, one strike. We're in the top half of the second inning. Don't forget tomorrow afternoon we'll be with you at 2.05 from Yankee Stadium as the Indians finish this series against the New York Yankees. It'll be John Denny against Ron Guidry, and then we head for Boston. Two balls at a strike. Here's an interesting tidbit from last night's game after Blylevin had given up the three runs to the Yankees, and he yelled over to Charbonneau in the dugout after the side was retired and said, pick me up, pick me up, somebody pick me up, and Charbonneau said, I'll pick you up, Bert. He hit the home run. He came charging back to the dugout, screaming at Bert, saying, I did it. Bouncer to third, Greg Nettles on to Worth. Charbonneau is gone. Hera holds second base, two outs. Rick Manning coming to bat. If you didn't watch last night's game, you probably won't believe what I'm going to tell you. Manning crushed one here last night deep into the seats and right. His first home run of the year. Manning now at 179 with three RBIs. And Rick two for three last night with that home run. He greeted Doug Bird with a blast. Some of the media here in New York said that it was probably about 425 feet. Strike one. I don't want to demean Mr. Manning's home run, but Herb Score had only one major league home run in his career, and he hit it off Bill Monboquette 
or I take that back, uh, Mari McDermott in Yankee Stadium. It came down in about the same place. <laughs> There's a smash up the middle into center field. Manning is going to send Hera home, and the Tribe leads one to nothing. And Mr. Manning is starting to stroke that ball with authority. Big clutch hit for Rick Manning as he delivers for the Tribe and puts the Indians on the board. You know what impressed me last night about Manning was after he hit the home run, his very next trip to the plate, he slapped a good hard single to left field, going with the pitch, a good line shot. Boy, when he starts hitting, he becomes a very valuable man in the offense for the Indians. That is Manning's fourth run batted in this year. Told me he knew he had that homer, too. He took his sweet time going around the bases. Manning back with a hand tag of the bag. A little more serious attempt by Rigetti. He said he actually went around those bases faster than he had intended to. Foul back. Manning's batting average goes up 15 points to 194. Oh, I see. Last night, statistics not included in that sheet they gave us concerning Manning. So actually came in tonight hitting 194 with a home run, four RBIs, and now he has five. Plus, he stole a base last night on John and got a tremendous jump on him. Bucky Dent, when he got the ball at second base, didn't even bother to apply a tag. Two strikes. Another thing here in Yankee Stadium, Manning is extremely valuable defensively because there's so much pasture to cover out there. 430 to deep left center field, 417 to direct center. For Riser fans, the inning is over, but the Indians get on the scoreboard. One run, one hit, one walk, one left. And at the end of an inning and a half, it is Cleveland one, the Yankees nothing. You're looking at the world's most sophisticated machine, the human body. Sometimes even the most sophisticated machine needs repair. Blue Cross and Blue Shield, the world's most popular health club. Tell me, Joe, how does the season look? We've got it locked this year. Well, you sound awfully sure. Here, let me show you what I mean. Why have you locked up all this bread? 